Okay, so here's what I kind of came up with, and um, I kind of created this cutting material, so to speak. So one thing is actually driving what is cutting, and the other thing is you know, being cut, so to speak. So um, it does require that whatever your object is, so that you're going to come out of the floor, if this is like an AR scenario, has this material on it. So really quickly, here's what the material is. You don't need all these parts. The basic thing is this box mask. Um, I decided to drive it with parameters, um, like another object, but you could just as easily put in um, locations and things if you know what they are. And then the fall off can, be the, can kind of be the softness. I just threw this dither TAA on there um, as an example to kind of show you how you could maybe soften it up without making it um, translucent, but this part is this dither and this are not necessary. You do need this one minus since that's what's making the mask subtractive. Um, and so this is the, again, the, mat the material as it is. So this is a material parameter collection. So I just created uh, a col collection. I have two vector parameters, one location and one scale. And then, so I'm using those um, to drive the location and the bounds. Um, so what I did is I created this cube blueprint. So I literally just grabbed a cube and created a blueprint with it. Um, then inside the, it's literally just a cube, There's nothing in the event graph, but in the construction script, these are the two things I'm using. I'm using get world location and get component bounds. Um, and it's inheriting from the static mesh component here. Uh, I noticed I needed to apply the box extent times two. It seemed like it was only, it was like it was grabbing it from the zero point outwards to one side. So it was off by two. So I just put a multiplier of two in here. So I'm multiplying the two on the scale and we're going straight in on the uh, location. So now if I like move this object or if I scale this object, it's going to cut based on what I'm doing. So in your case, you could just scale this thing up and put it down low enough and then this guy will, you know, come out of it. You just need to make it big enough um, that it works. Uh, so that's kind of the idea. the The material that's on this is just I literally just made a, a material with a zero value for opacity. Um, you could do it as opacity mask, or I just put it as opacity so that way I could, if I wanted to, um, you know, change this and make it so it was semi-transparent, so I could kind of see what I was doing with the box you know, while I was trying to line it up and then I could turn it off later. Um, but you know, in your case, if you, uh, you might not need it. Um, so that was the idea. What I was saying about the dither AA, if you look, there's kind of like sort of a soft edge on this, so to speak. Um, you can make it more pronounced if you open up the material and if you make an instance and, uh, the fall off around seven, I feel like is kind of what did the trick for me. Um, but if you turn it off, you can see, you know, we get this hard cutoff here. And if you turn it on, it kind of does like a little softening with a dithering to it. So it can be useful. It's not necessary. Um, but I just wanted to show an idea. The, if you go into the optimization for shader complexity, it's not that bad. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty tolerable, um, <laughs> for what it is. So. I think this uh, technique would be fine for what you're doing. Um, the only kind of caveat, of course, is that you need to have this material um, instance on anything that needs to come out of it. So what I would probably do in that case is, you know, obviously you want to be using instances anyway. So you would, you know, make that your mass material. You can put the instance on it and you could actually just put um, inside here like a switch uh, for this opacity mask. So you could um, use like a static switch parameter. And then if it's true, like do this thing. And then if it's not, um, don't. <laughs> and so that's kind of uh, one way that you could deal with it. Or um, I mean, you can make this a material function and which is actually what I did in my other project when I was testing this out, just make this material function so then you could paste it in as a material function into your other materials. It just kind of depends, but I think this will get the job done for you. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, 
And again, I'll just give you one more good screenshot of like, this is the material. Basically, it's just this box mask that you need. Uh, all this kind of stuff is for just for show to like give a night, you know, to be able to use this other volume. If I didn't want to do that, I could literally just specify an or world origin and a size, and that would also work um, the same way. So hopefully that makes sense.